Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So today's video is a response to a request asking that I show how I double masked with the DNA and the synovia. So if you want to see about my double masking, just keep watching. I guess I already did a little test balloon and I did a quick video of this in the Facebook group. I went live. I've not done that before. People wanted to see how I double masked when I went for my COVID-19, my Moderna injections. And I was in a city hospital, a very urban environment, really pretty crowded. So I doubled up and I added the Synovia on top of the DNA mask. So first, let's just have a quick sidebar about double masking. I haven't changed my thoughts on it at all. I think you kind of have to think about what you're doing it for. I don't really know where this whole concept of double masking came from, like w double what? You know, we see masks that are one layer thick. We have masks made out of like cotton underwear material with stretch in them. And then we have masks like this DNA mask with a trilaminate polypropylene that this is three layers, but the middle layer is sort of three in on of itself. So this is like a five layer mask. So do we mean we should wear 10 or do we mean should we should wear two or I think that it makes a lot more sense to just wear a substantial mask. Like if you're doubling because one of your masks is inadequate, why don't you get what you think is an adequate mask? So yeah, that's my soapbox for that. When I double mask, it's more about getting different things working for me. So when I'm in a particularly high risk environment, I like to have the benefit of this very substantial mask, which has a trilaminate polypropylene in it. And this very substantial mask, which I call the master of the high-tech textile, is profoundly antimicrobial. So if I could put these together, I feel like I've got a lot of protection. So I have another video coming out uh, tomorrow. And I'm going to talk about some tricks because some people have said they can't seem to get the DNA mask. The, the head strap wants to slide down, and that's really easy to fix. I'm actually doing it now, but I don't want to be too redundant. So tune in tomorrow for that video. But I'm going to start by obviously putting on the base layer. So this is the DNA mask. It's The DNA mask is a very thick, heavy, and a very substantial mask. It's also very fitted. So it's kind of hard to get it to go anywhere. It's it's supposed to be like that. Some people don't like that. You know, it's warm, it's stiff, it's whatever it is, but that's because it brings this trilaminate polypropylene to the table. So I start with just getting this fitted exactly how I'm going to want it. Now, if I were going out, which I'm not right now, I would also put on either my glasses or my safety goggles or whatever I'm going to be wearing to make sure that I don't have any fogging because that's indicative of a fit issue. So I never really do with this mask and I'm not going out anyway, so I'm not going to do that now. So the thing about layering these two, that they lend themselves well to a good partnership, is that this one is so form-fitted, whereas this one is so light and it's almost flimsy. It has very little form aside from a very thin, uh, uh, probably an aluminum nose piece in there. Everything else is, is just really flimsy. So the thing you have to think about when you layer one mask over another is... If let's say you're layering something that is thick or has some bulk to it on top of something, you could actually be causing some more gaps. If, for example, if you were going to press hard enough right here, you could like put some tension there and lift the fabric. So, you know, that's why I say it's not only about the numbers and two is not necessarily better than one. It's, you just kind of have to think about their qualities and what they're doing for you. But what you don't want is to create any puckering that would yield some leak that, you know, that's it's better to just have one mask. So I'm just going to put the Synovia on. And I, I will pull this down low enough that I'm not seeing it sort of in my vision. Now, the Synovia is shorter, but it's wider than the DNA mask. So, of course, I've got some of the DNA peeking out here. I've got plenty of it down here, which I expected because it tucks under the chin, which is great. I think it is a little wider, so it probably you'd probably see the synovia in that it completely covers, I would think it completely covers the DNA. Now, the synovia is puckered a little bit here, but that doesn't matter because my fit is is on the mask below it where there, there's no puckering, nothing at all. So this is what I do. Uh, so I'm not worried about this. It's just like an extra sort of an antimicrobial shield for me. So speaking of layering, I think people often 
refer to layering thinking that they will layer some sort of disposable. So like a disposable polypropylene mask like these. So this is the Ambrist. These are made in the United States. They're tested. It's a level three mask, which means that it's good for a certain, like, I think 160 millimeters mercury pressure of water or fluid. So these do meet the criteria to be a level three mask. But this is still a plain old disposable mask, okay? Now, you get these in a large pack. I think they come in 50s. Uh, sometimes the ear loops are a little loose. I've pulled one out of the pack before and had the ear loop just break from the force of just pulling it out of the pack. So when you do, make sure that you pull it by the body of the mask, not by the ear loop. But I, I don't tend to wear a lot of disposables. I had said that earlier. I, I don't like the idea of the waist. They're sort of one size fits almost nobody. But let me just as an example put this one on. So first of all, I did a video a while back on how to get a more form fit with a disposable mask. So if you are going to use this, just only this, I would recommend you watch that video. I'm going to link it above and it will show you how to like eliminate these gaps. You're going to do a little maneuvering with the ear loops so that you get a much more form fit because this, this leaks everywhere. So then I think the idea is some people say, well, I'm just going to layer something else on it. So let me just grab my DNA mask again. Let's say the DNA mask was a little shorter. It's not. So now I have a very, very tight mask right here. And I, it, it actually creates a little gap on this one. So can I move it so that the other one is totally tucked in most of the way? Maybe not up here. Yeah. Okay, I think I've got that mostly tucked in. So this would be a way that if you really wanted to do something like this, here you might have a little bit of a room for entry, uh, a little leak. Anywhere where, you know, one is laying on top of the other at a borderline, you've got some room for leaks. So, you know, to my mind, first of all, let me take this thing off. The DNA mask with the superb trilaminate polypropylene, I, I, you know, I don't think that the Ambrose really brings anything to the table. I, I think that this is the case for just pick the substantial mask and, and you don't need So this. what about if we wanted to, let's say you wanted to get some polypropylene, you didn't want it quite as heavy as the DNA mask and you wanted to put that over the synovia, underneath the synovia. And I would do it in that order just because this keeps the outside cleaner. And between the two, I think that the disposable one does have more fit. And so I would put that being that it's more fitted at the base layer. And again, I would want to make sure that nothing is pressing. So they're both here. Neither one is fitted. They, they never were to begin with, but nothing is like pressing on anything else to create any room for um, a bubbling or a, a rippling where there's going to be an air gap. I think I would do this with the technique I showed. And if you use the technique to make a disposable mask a more form fitting, you might find that the synovia fits all the way over it. I do think this is an option, but I think it's better to just pick something that's meant for this purpose. So either pick a hybrid mask or get your DNA mask, which is so perfectly fitted and put the synovia over that if you want to. The more of the stuff that I try, guys, the more I feel that this layering is just sort of another level of sloppy. Like we have all these inadequate products, so let's just put them together and hope that they would equal a better product. Okay, so I just did that little trick with this mask that I referred to where it's a, it's a trick to just get a better, more precise fit with a plain old surgical mask. And that is tucked now, so this is not pressing and making any gaps. You know, I think this would work. I think this would be something that would work if you just wanted something easy that you could throw away under your synovia. Uh, it's a little bit cooler than something like the DNA mask. Again, I don't think that this polypropylene mask can hold a candle to the DNA mask. It's not meant to. Uh, this will, at some point, get moist. You'll know when you've got to throw it away. It's, it's a one-time use deal. And so while I'm here and while I've got the Ambrist mask, I decided that I would cut one open and let's do a little bit of water testing and see what's inside. So this is my first look here. Uh, this is, this is a three layer. You can see that little layer. So these are polypropylene. I'm not sure what that middle 
The middle feels a bit softer, likely a polypropylene as well. It just feels a little bit different than the, the outside. Now, for those of you who I always hear that people are unclear about it. The colored is on the outside. The white is on the inside. That's where my makeup is. So I'm going to do a little bit of water testing. I'm going to test the outside first. I suspect both sides, given that this is a plain old polypropylene mask, I think they're both going to be water resistant. And in fact, this one is. So I'm going to try to show you a little. This rolls right off. Now the inside that goes next to your face, actually before I look at the inside, I'm going to feel, I'm going to feel the middle layer, the part that's, that's next to where we just tested and see if any wetness, no, it's completely dry in there. Okay, so let's test the inside of the mask that sits up against your face. Now again, this isn't going to meet my criteria of a fabric mask, it's not a fabric mask. This is a 100% polypropylene disposable mask, so my guess is that water is going to beat up. Yeah, beads up and rolls right off. So let's, for the sake of it, just see how much. I'm going to put a couple of droppers full. Yeah, it all comes out. So I will check and see if the other side of this has any penetration of water. No, it feels maybe minimally damp on the other side of this, but not the next layer is completely dry. So, you know, that's one of the reasons that these, th this will build up moisture when you're wearing it for a period of time, right? This is not something that's going to be wicking. And probably if they did make it wick, it would even cut down on its life further because it's just such a little thin layer in the middle there. Yeah, this is a perfectly good kind of in a pinch, disposable. It's thin, it's easy to tear unlike some of the layers that we've looked at in our fabric masks on my channel when I've opened up some of them. I'm not going to open a DNA mask, guys. They're too expensive. Yeah, see how easily that middle layer tears. So, you know, this is not a workhorse of a mask. This is, it's exactly what it's meant for. It's just a disposable quick thing. I tend to not lean on these things. I, I just don't think you're going to get the kind of performance out of this that you get out of some of the other masks. That said, if you're looking for something disposable and a quick pinch or for whatever reason to just layer the way we just talked about, I, I don't see a problem with getting the Ambrist. At least they are tested here in the US. I, I think there's a trustworthy name there and I've heard from other people that their customer service is very good. So I've only ordered and received. I really haven't had to engage with them on any customer service issues. So anybody who's had any experience, please put it down in the comment box. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. It was just born out of a simple request to show how I do the DNA Synovia combination. Again, I reserve that for like what I consider a high risk setting. That's an awful lot of stuff to wear all at one time, but I found that the combo works really well. So please check out the video I have going up tomorrow. That's gonna show you some of the fitting tips, tricks for that DNA mask, among other things. And until next time, be well, bye-bye.